Okay, so I'm here to talk about social media addiction and just being addicted to screen time in general. Now, I don't have that problem. I mean, I once did, but I eliminated the problem by simply removing all the apps from my phone, right? So I basically removed Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I still use them, but my strategy is I only use them on the weekends, right? So Sunday night, Sunday, Saturday, I'll open pretty much all those apps, usually Instagram, sometimes Facebook and TikTok. I'll use it Saturday and Sunday, but Sunday night, I remove those apps from my phone, completely remove them. The only app uh, that I keep on there that's somewhat social media uh, is uh, YouTube. I keep that on there, I don't remove it, because YouTube, um, I can learn things from it. You know, if something breaks in my house, I can, you know, use it. And if I need to, you know, uh, learn, get a little crash course on something, YouTube is there to help. So it's very helpful, um, but I don't sit there all day scrolling on YouTube either. Um, so, but what I really wanna talk about is my wife. My wife is addicted to social media, right? She primarily uses Instagram. She has Instagram and Facebook. She doesn't really have TikTok, but Instagram, yeah, she is on that all day. Uh, prior to COVID, uh, she wasn't on it that much. Uh, she's an avid reader. She would read a lot. Here, my arm's getting tired, so I'm gonna move it right here. She would read a lot, um, read a lot of books. She's always reading, 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 reading. And I thought that was great, you know? She's basically feeding her brain uh, with, you know, good stuff, educating herself. But um, COVID hit and we had to work from home and her social media use just went through the roof. Like she has been on it all the time. And it wasn't overnight. It slowly kind of gradually uh, increased. Her usage just went up slowly. Now, um, the problem with this is I've noticed, uh, you know, from her working from home, she works for about 10 minutes, then she's on her phone for another 10, just scrolling on social media. And she works for another 10 minutes, then she's on her phone scrolling for another 10 minutes or more sometimes. And it's not my you know, business. I'm not her manager or supervisor. Um, I don't know what her workload is like and I don't know how she manages her work. But to me, that looks like it's pretty unmanageable and it's out of control. Um, I kind of would pick on, pick on her about it, like in a joking way, but she gets really uh, upset when I do that. Uh, the other thing is um, when she, she's back in the office now. So when she goes to work, she comes back home from work. Uh, she showers, you know, you know, gets her daughter ready, you know, for the night and whatnot. And then she sits on the couch with like a whole bag of sunflower seeds and just literally sits cross, crisscross on the couch, criss, you know, cross-legged on the couch, chewing sunflower seeds and just scrolling for like at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And I'm like, but every day, like Monday through Friday, and also on the weekends as well, after she has lunch, she's on the couch doing that. Now, normally that's not, that doesn't bother me. It's like, whatever, like, you know, obviously that is a clear addiction, but here's the problem though. Uh, when she, I, I work later than her and I still work from home, um, but she, uh, she comes home from work and she's on social media and she's not playing with our daughter. And when your daughter complains and says, hey, mommy isn't playing with me, she's on her Instagram, there's a problem there, you know? There's a problem there, clearly a problem there. Um, and it's sad, it's really sad, you know? And when I call her out on it and tell her, hey, look, you know, our daughter, you know, she wants you know, to connect with you and have you know, some time to play with you, she gets offended, she gets angry, she gets pissed off, she doesn't want to, um, even talk about the situation at all. Uh, also, another thing I've noticed is um, her uh, patience is very short, very, very short. Uh, her attention span is very short, right? 
when I talk to her and she's on social media, she's not fully engaged. She's on her phone. She looks back at me on her phone. She gives me short answers. Um, and, you know, just last week, for example, you know, I had um, a, a unrelated issue going on, you know, and I asked her opinion for it. And she, you know, answered with a question and said, you know, well, how would, how do you think about this situation? How does it make you feel? And I told her like, this isn't a therapy session, you know, like, I mean, don't talk to me like a therapist. You know, I, I know what my opinion is, you know, but I'm asking you for your opinion. You know, I know my opinion. I just, I'm trying to bounce this off of you and see what your perspective is, right? So anyway, um, not to get off topic, but she, um, she uh, was giving me a short answer because she was busy on her phone, you know, instead of being engaged. And, and you know and talking to me and giving me her point of view she was on her phone and she didn't really want to address the issue and I'm her husband so I know the the, the you know the uh, that type of behavior because I've seen it with um, when she's on her phone that's how she acts you know she's, she's not really engaged you know so um, short attention span uh, uh, very little patience um, when I, you know, talk to her about this, she gets upset, doesn't want to talk about it. These are classic signs of addiction. And I know this because I'm a recovering addict. I'm a recovering alcoholic, right? So it's, uh, it's the unmanageability and getting called out on it. You know, alcoholics, they don't like that. They don't like somebody else telling them that they have a problem, right? Um, that's why it's so hard for people to come into AA and admit they're an alcoholic. They don't want to say that. No, nobody wants to admit that they're an alcoholic or have a problem or, you know, an addiction problem. And the other thing is, is uh, with, with addicts and alcoholics, oftentimes it's the people you're around that know you're an addict or an alcoholic. You know, they, they know that you have a problem and you're the last person to know that you have a problem, you know. So basically, everyone knows you're messed up, except you. You're the last person to find out until you hit rock bottom and you figure out, oh crap, I really do have a problem. You know, otherwise you're just in denial the whole time. So, um, you know, um, you can't BS a BSer because I was a master BSer uh, when I was in my addiction. So you can't BS. You can't basically. Uh, I, I'm an I'm I'm a recovering alcoholic. I know the symptoms and signs. So, um, yeah, you know, um, she, she, you know, whenever I have these talks with her, she improves, she, you know, she curbs her s social media use, but it's not that easy. You know, you got to take action. You got to take real action, not just, you know, like for a day, read a book or whatnot, as like she does, you know, with me, you know, social media, when I was addicted to it, you know, and the, when I first started removing the apps off my phone, like it was, it was difficult because the minute I removed it, the next day, a month, they say I removed it on a Sunday night, right? Which I do. That following Monday, I check my phone and there's nothing there. There's no apps to see. There's no games. It's, there's no, it's, there's nothing to see. I put the phone down. I do something else at work, whatever, get lunch, whatever the case may be. Then I check my phone again, 10 minutes later. There's nothing to see. There's no apps to click on, right? So I keep, I kept doing that on and on and on and on because I got so used to that pattern of just checking my phone and, you know, scrolling. Um, there's a whole lot more to it, this that I'm not seeing as well. Um, I mean, th th we live in a new world. This type of addiction is, is a problem, you know? And uh, anyhow, um, if you guys have any suggestions or if anybody's watching this, uh, just comment below and, and give me some suggestions. Because, um, you know, oftentimes when I talk to my wife about it, she gets upset and then I end up apologizing to her, you know, for being mean or whatever. And it's like, it gets tiring after a while. It's like, dude, like, I can't just apologize because, you know, I do play a part. Sometimes it can be mean. Yeah. So she, so, so vice versa, she, her as well. But when you have to constantly apologize for uh, an existing problem, it's just tiring. It's like, dude, like okay like you play a part too you know like come on man like own up to it you know and it's it's it sucks man like it's sad to see this but uh anyhow comment below let me know what you guys think if you have any suggestions and uh thank you bye